let's go into a little more detail about how the recipe app files work. Now if you look in the navigator on the left hand side you'll see a group of files and we'll look at first of all we have app delegate and app delegate and you'll see a recurring theme here we have an H file and an M file Right, these files end with a .h or a .m. So the files that end with a .h are called header files or interface files. And their purpose is to define methods and properties that our class will use. So that's the header file or the inter it's also called the interface file. The m file is the implementation file. And that's where the class file information goes. That's where the code is going to be written as to what should happen. And it's more of the, the detail, all of the stuff that the files need in order to be implemented in the app. Now let's just start with the main view controller. The main view, as we saw before, uh, the main view controller nib file Right, this was the interface file for our app, for the first view. And when we talk about views, we're talking about the screen. So in this screen or this window, uh, this is a view. And our flip side had a different view. So the flip side view controller, this will show you the view for that screen. So to begin with, you can think of each screen in terms of having a nib file and a header file and an implementation file. Now let's look at the main view controller header file. It has some comments up here. So a single line comment you'll see has two forward slashes. If we wanted to comment out several lines at once we can use a forward slash and an asterisk and that starts a comment and then it won't end until we do an asterisk and a forward slash and now when i do that you can see that we start to get some error symbols here so this is saying well there's some errors and some things that aren't right with this and that's simply because i've commented out some important things that our application needs in order to run. So I'm just going to undo those comment lines. So let's start with the import statement. Now the import statement here, uh, we're using that directive to include other interface files that our application will need to access. So if you think in terms of how our application works, we start out on the main view controller, and then when we tap the button, it's showing us the flip side view controller. So we need to access the flip side view controller information. And so we can do that by importing it in. Next, we have the interface directive. And you can see here, this is also why it's called the interface file. So our interface directive is saying, okay, this is the name of our class right we have a main view controller class and you can see here these are our class files the main view controller m file is our class file and the parent we're saying the parent of this view controller is a ui view controller so ui whenever you see that just think user interface so our main view controller class inherits its properties from the UI view controller class. And this is something the UI view controller class is defined for us by Apple. Now just to give you an idea of where all of this is coming from, right? I just said that this is created for us and it comes from Apple, but okay, so like where does it come from and, and how is this connected to it? If you look in the navigator over on the left, we'll see the frameworks folder. And when we create an app, 
we automatically get some basic frameworks, some things that are available, available to us to use and implement in our applications. So if I expand the UI kit framework, we'll see a headers folder. And if I expand that, you start to see all of these other header files, right? Color and event and um, page control and search bars. So if I come down here, there's a UI view controller header file. So if I click that, the edit area over here is going to change and it starts to show you in more detail what's happening. So it's importing, now it's starting to import other things. It's importing the foundation and the UI kit defines and the UI kit UI application. So it's importing even more header files. And it's helpful to read some of the description in here. Gives you a basic idea of what these files are for, right? So the UI view controller is a generic controller based class that manages a view and it has methods that are called when a view appears or disappears. So if you come through and you can just scroll down, don't be intimidated by all of this, but this is just to give you an idea of where everything is coming from. So by saying that if I come back up here to our file, right, I go back to our main view controller file by saying, okay, um, that this is the parent class UI view controller, then we automatically have access to all that stuff that's in that UI view controller header file. So we don't have to write all that code in here and it gives us a way of accessing that information. So you'll typically have the name of the class with a colon and then the name of the parent class. And so just like children inherit things from their parents, right? Our main view controller class is inheriting all the information, all of the methods that are available in the UI view controller class. Now, sometimes you will see after that some things that will be inside less than greater than symbols. And these will be protocols. And protocols are something we'll get into more detail again in another video. But um, a protocol is a way of implementing or adding support for certain features. Now, there'll be other components that will be in a header file. You, we define our instance variables here and also how to deal with some memory management. But in this example, we don't have any. So I will point those out in a future video. But we do have a method. And this method is an interface builder action. When you see this IB action, this is a method and it usually means that something from Interface Builder is going to be used to trigger this action. So in our example, right, in Interface Builder, our main view controller, we have this button, which is going to trigger the action. The default when we created the app had a little I button over here that was set up to fire off that method or that action, but we, we switched it to a different type of button. So in this case, this button is an interface builder and it is set up to trigger an action that's in our files owner, which is in our class files, and it's called show info. So our main view controller header file is defining it and saying there's an action in interface builder that's connected to this and it's called show info. Now this part here for ID sender, not always a requirement, but it can be useful. What ID sender is doing is it's saying, well, something is triggering this action that's going to happen and we wanna get the ID of whatever it was that was doing that. So in our example again, in interface builder, view recipe, is this is our sender and so there may be occasion where we want to get the value of the text that's on the button so that if 
it was the button that had this text on it, we can identify who the sender was because we might want to trigger something to happen back to this button. Like after it's been clicked, we can make it disappear. Or after it's been clicked, we can change the text that's on the button. So if we have that information, it's being sent to us as sender and we can capture its ID. So our header file is defining the information. It's saying this is what's coming. This is what the class file is going to need in order to be able to, to work. So now if I go to the main view controller, M file, the implementation file, just remember M is for implementation here. Right, we have, I'll start at the top. Again, we have some comments and another import statement. And here again, it's going to import the main view controller header file. So we're saying, okay, it's, it, we're creating sort of a link or a connection back to our header file to make all that information available in here. And I'm just gonna scroll down here to some of these other methods. Right, we have our implementation directive and the name of our class file. And we have some methods like view did load and view did unload. These are some common things that you commonly get by default when you start a new project in Xcode. Uh, there's some other features in here, should auto rotate to interface orientation, meaning it's going to, we can have it set to display in different orientations. And if you look, you can see return interface orientation is not equal to user interface orientation upside down. If I go back to our main project properties, you can see these are the supported device orientations, the ones that are punched in and, and dark, but upside down is not. And you can make it, but it's not considered good form or good design, simply because if the phone or the device is upside down and the phone rings, then the user has to flip it the other way in order to talk. So upside down is not considered the best use or the best interface design. So again, let me go back here to our main view controller implementation file. And so this is basically saying um, that it supports all user interface orientations except portrait upside down. So let's come down here. Let's see, this is our action, our IB action show info sender. Now in the header file, we were just defining it. We were just saying there's an action and this is what it's going to be. In the implementation file, we're saying, okay, this is what we want you to do. And so inside curly braces, we're defining it more fully and saying, okay, this is the instructions of now what should be done. And you can read through here and pretty much tell what's happening. Uh, we know flip side view controller, right? We have flip side view controller, which handles the view. And we have header and implementation files for the flip side view. And we are allocating it into memory and initializing it with a nib name. Init, which is initialized with nib name. And remember I said nibs, NIV is what these used to be called .nib, so this is still historically hanging in there. But we're saying, okay, um, we're initializing a new view controller, and it's called Flipside View Controller, and uh, this is the name of it, and it's going to be of the type nib. And controller delegate self, in other words, who's going to handle the processing of this? And it's going to be our self, it's going to be our file. And then we say controller, modal transition style, flip horizontal. So you saw in the example that it flipped horizontally from one side to the other. Uh, we can do other different transition styles. All right, if I click in here, we can look on the panel over to the side and under quick help, it shows what we have, what we've clicked in or what we have selected. So we see uh, the flip horizontal, 
and you could also see some other related ones that you could try. Um, cover vertical, style cross dissolve. Let's try that one. So I could say modal transition style cross dissolve. And it starts to give you suggestions. Now there's only like one other option so I don't have a whole list here. But as you start to type, it, it gives you these auto features, the auto type options that we can pick from. And I could just keep typing or I can come down here and select it to have it fill it in for me. So now I'm going to save this and let me try running it in simulator and see what that transition style looks like instead of the flip horizontal. Okay, so here's the app and when I do view recipe, we have the nice dissolved transition from one to the other instead of the flip. Right, so when you want to know more information about any of these, uh, we can again simply click in it and under the quick help get a little bit of information. And if we want full detail, like you want the full listing of this, then uh, you can double click on the name and it will load in the user's documentation. So in the documentation then we can come down in here and get more details about whatever it was we double clicked on. And it does take a while to get used to reading this documentation and kind of figuring out how to implement these samples into your code. But again, um, as a beginner, don't be overwhelmed by uh, the information that's here. Take it little steps at a time and start to build. Okay, so this represents our entire method of what should happen when the button is clicked. When that button is clicked, it's going to trigger this action and then it's going to do whatever is inside the curly braces to complete that action. So that's a basic and gentle introduction to some of the files that we have in a project and how they're connected to each other. And we will certainly get much more in depth as we go on in some future demonstrations.